good morning and thank you for joining us on another edition of the program as usual uh we discuss topical issues from the standpoint of the people and today we'll be bringing yet another interesting topic uh to you uh well let me also inform you that we would uh, likely uh, open the ports for you to react on to the on the issue we're treating today but as we usually do on the program i'll be telling you some of the happenings in the country in the course of the week from the public square this week all right quickly we'll take some of uh, the happenings in the country and then i'll ask my studio guests to react on any of the stories that really interest them uh this week uh, we have headlines such as Shoot anyone with AK-47, Buhari direct security agents. That's uh, coming from the Nigerian Tribune of this morning. Um, one killed, passengers kidnapped as headsmen ambush travelers in Osho. And one of the biggest headlines this morning is after six days, Northerners returned to South for commerce. Uh, Gumi's comment on war against banditry dangerous and citing, that's according to Khan. One of us saw her abducted father in kidnappers' den, Zamfara Schoolgirl, an update on the released uh, abducted students in Zamfara State. And of course, FG declares Zamfara no fly zone, bans mining activities. Uh, those are some of the headlines, the very big headlines this week. NLCTUC threatened strike over minimum wage. All right, quickly, I'll introduce my studio guest to you. Uh, I have. Uh, how do we even introduce you now? Should we call you the newly appointed or... <laughs> because you, you sat with the governor for four years and just yesterday you were reappointed to continue with him for another four years. So um, I, I would welcome the senior special assistant to the governor, Mr. Governor on Agriculture in Indo State, that's uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ulutu. Yeah, thank you very Lutu. much thank for you, coming. Akiolutu is here with us in the studio. We'll be talking about uh, the issue at hand today. Uh, which of the headlines that I've already told would you like to talk about? Well, uh, the return of our northern brothers or neighbors to uh, the south. Uh, primarily, agriculture is market driven. Mm -hmm. you, don't you don't produce without having a market. Uh, whatever might be the case, like I said, you can always decide, it's a free world, and decide where you choose to do your business. So, I, like I've said earlier on, I don't see it as a big problem that uh, they decided otherwise. Uh, there's freedom for everything, as long as your freedom doesn't infringe on somebody else's freedom. But fundamentally, uh, like I did say, and I thank God that this administration, the administration of Arakonelu uh, has done tremendously well in the agricultural sector. Okay, before uh, we get to the to the nitty gritty of the discussion, uh, I want to also um, introduce my other studio guest, Barrister Moshua, is here with us. Thank you for coming, Barrister Moshua. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's nice to have you. Good morning, listeners at home. Good morning, Nigerians. Okay, so which of the headlines would you also talk about? Yeah, we can discuss anything because uh, we can discuss anything, we can discuss everything. Because uh, as we can see in Nigeria today, uh, Yorubans will say, Eku, okay, Eku, Eye, okay, Eye. So whatever we want to discuss, I think we should be able to discuss it and hang it somewhere. Not just about discussion, but let it be that after discussing something, happens thereafter okay uh seems you, you, you probably you didn't get the concept i showed some headlines and i, I got the norm, everything the norm here is you talk about any of the headlines that yeah. you yeah you find interesting yeah. okay all right um coincidentally we will be talking about this uh uh recent blockade of food supply from the north to the south but uh we thank God that's been put to rest. Just this morning, we got a report that uh, our northern friends will be, will be back to business in the south from this morning. But first of all, is there an issue in all of this? About uh, weeks, a week ago, they made the amalgamated union of um, northern traders and cattle farmers made a, an announcement that there would be 
embarking on a strike, indefinite strike, occasioned by the fact that, according to them, some of their men were uh, maimed down south, and they actually alluded to the recent crisis in Ibado, or your state, the Shasha incident. Now, fine, it's been resolved. But first, is there an issue with that? Well, I believe there are, we are, there are issues, like uh, Barista Mosua said, said the only thing I would have liked to add is that uh, Mm -hmm. So we we, we we all all we are discussing today, I want us to have a flashback to the Second Republic. I did I, I remember vividly that when Shobafeme Olo was campaigning in the Second Republic, he made it abundantly clear. He talked about Kato. He said we don't need to move Kato from the northern part of the country to the southern part of the country. Then they asked him. They said, ah, people see this as their way of life. He said, no, culture is dynamic. It changes over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And he made it clear that time. He said, look, all you need to do is take some of these people outside the country. Let them see how this thing is being done elsewhere. So by the time they stay there for two, three, four weeks, and they see, see what is the way it's being done. So when they come back, set it up for some of them. He said, gradually, you'll be transforming uh, their lives, you'll be transforming the sector. So, 40 years down lane, we are still going the same way and complaining about what happened that time. So, I will personally want to look at what is on ground from the, po from, uh, the point of addressing the sector, addressing what has to be done. I am not interested in, put in uh, this party or that party. I am not interested in, because if we are to go into that, you will discover that uh, we've just been wasting our time. So fundamentally, there are issues. Issues, one, the way, uh, the, the way uh, we are, the, the livestock sector is, it did not start just yesterday. It has been there. And we, it, 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 it's something that has to be addressed. What we have presently doesn't benefit the herders doesn't benefit the owner of the cattle, doesn't benefit Nigerians, doesn't benefit anybody. That if it's injurious even to our farmers. Mm -hmm. So it's a loose, loose situation. Then when it comes to the issue of when you yeah, that was I believe the genesis of I mean the old thing started with the issue of kidnapping here and there and yes uh, insecurity. People were no longer they felt they were insecure traveling from one place to another became difficult. So but when you look at it again uh you look at the issue of maybe bringing food from the northern part of the country we won't spend ourselves in this part of in this part of the of of, of the country the southwest we're producing our tomato i do remember okay we're producing okay. our yam we're producing everything but suddenly because of westernization suddenly because of education i i, I do say it. We had the, uh, I mean, there is a popular uh, gospel uh, musician that said, uh, the rich, it is the rich man that lives downtown. Oh. So, it, it, the poor ones come to the cities to, to, to struggle this and that. So, we, 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 there is, uh, we have things that are wrong with the people. The mindset of the, the mindset people. of the people. Okay. You and I, the elites. We have challenges we in have this country. Lot, we really have a lot to talk about. Thank God you're here. But before we move uh, on to other issues, uh, on the announcement of this blockade, which was resolved uh, uh, late last night, uh, it caused the hike in, in the prices of goods and services. Goods now, uh, staple food, tomato, pepper, and the like in the market. And, you know, a lot of people agitated, especially Southerners, who were the recipient in the, in the whole situation, they're really agitated and uh, people were complaining and this brings to mind the issue of self-sufficiency in food production that we've been talking about before now for a long time do you think that gov government at all levels in the south are doing enough to ensure that we're food sufficient and we do not have to probably depend on the segments of of the nation for, for food production thank you very much uh, when I started, I said we have quite a lot on the table, a lot to discuss, but I think time will not permit us. Uh, I will want to say, because of some restrictions, either by MBC or what have you, 
uh, NBC should give radio media practitioners opportunity to have some uh, program called Yabis, Yabis time, where Nigerians can talk, even in families. We have Yabis time. Uh, father, mother will talk. Because you see, why we're having issues, just like the question you asked, why we're having issues in Nigeria today is simply because we are emasculated, we are restricted, we are configured to a particular way of life, and that has not helped us. How can you explain in a country where we have been, the southerners here, when they say they are selling uh, 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 fertilizer, fertilizer those days, even up to today, we don't use it in the south. We use it in the north. The south, the northerners will still come, the one allocated for the south. They will come and buy it from us, they take it to the north. So it goes to show that we don't have any problem even providing or producing food in the south. The recent time, thank God for the type of governor we have here. Some people will give it to him. Some people will say this. Some people, but we thank God for the type of governor we have. I don't even know what is even driving him, but I believe there is a particular spirit, and I believe the spirit of God that can make a governor to say, "You people living in in our forest, come out! What are you doing there? You are perpetrating criminality." And. Why we are having issues now? It's not as if our people, just like what uh, uh, the SSA said, it's not as if as if some of us don't even want to go into farming. I remember many times now when I go to my village, I see graduates. They have gone back to the villages. They are getting loans from central bank and what have you. They are into farming. But my dear, what is happening in the bushes? Fulanese cannot allow people to farm. I saw a particular video clip where they are cutting yam. Which is one of the issues. Okay. Issues. Before we go ahead, yes. quickly, yeah. uh, I would like us to confirm the current situation of things from the uh, Seriki Shasha here in Ndo State. Yeah. is on the line now. Good morning, Seriki. Morning there. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Okay, there are reports this morning that, uh, of course, I'm sure you're aware uh, about the recent ha happenings uh, where uh, there have been blockade of food supply from the north to the south. No, everywhere is open now. Yes, but this morning we got reports that um, you, your people will be returning to commerce in the south. How true is that? Can you confirm that for us? Uh, there's not any problem in Shasha this morning. Everybody has learned their market is free. Okay, so... No, would, would, there in would, would there be, would there be um, sale of food, food um, products now, especially from the, from the north? This problem is not such a problem. The problem is a uh, union of a tomato seller and cow seller. Okay. Uh, and then now um, they are setting the matter. Everybody free to carry market from anywhere to anywhere you are going. All right. Okay. There's not any problem. Bef before you allow you to go, what, what in initially occasioned that particular move? What, why, why did your people hoard um, tomatoes and pepper and everything like that? The yeah, complaint is that uh, this uh, issue of the first, the, the first issue is uh, end of start. Okay. They are destroyed their property, killing their people, and another thing happened, another one happened at Ibadan. Okay. Uh, they are killing their people, uh, do so their market, burn their motto, uh, so they have no any competition from government. Hmm. But now everything has been resolved. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you very much, Seriki. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, we, we had to do that, yeah. actually, so that we can... I, I want to make some connection to what Seriki Shasha just said. Okay. When you look at the explanation he made, you discover that if we begin to join Heju concerning what he just said, that means we either will be apportioning blame to this or that. But concerning the effect it has on the southerners, whenever there is any change, there must be effect, either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. It's like when husband and wife uh, divorces, it may affect the children, it may affect even the husband or now, the Now, the wife. question now is now, even is that we, we, we already have this situation um, staring us in the face. Yeah. 
and it is now obvious that probably we might uh it will be safe to say that we depend at least to the tune of about 80 percent on northerners for food production now the question that this really has brought to the minds of many is why can we not be food sufficient in the south that is exactly what i was saying before now that we have always been doing this and the ssa alluded to it that before now we had our tomatoes we have our, our yams it's not as if we don't even have yam season here we have cocoa yam. we have cocoa yam. it is just that when it gets to a particular level we will begin to say okay a, a, a yams will be coming from benue yam will be coming from monicha yam will be coming from nasarawa and that time our own will be germinating and by the time their own is getting dry our own is coming out so it's not as if we don't even have any food to su sustain ourselves here even a uh, kudos to uh, the former government uh, 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 during the uh, um, um, good lord jonathan uh, regime good lord jonathan regime when uh, this man who is uh, the um, um, agricultural i think uh, african De uh, uh, development bank okay. additional okay. they said can nigeria does not have any problem with all season farming we believe that you know some people will say it is a particular time that you can grow yeah it's a particular time that you can grow beans mm -hmm. What that government was trying to do then was that we can grow yam anytime, we can grow uh, potato anytime, we can grow beans anytime. So, but the issue of trying to block food from coming from the north to the south, I want to believe it is born out of malice. And I see, I doubt if they can survive because it's a symbolic thing. If you are bringing food, we are using money on exchange for it we are sending our own palm oil down there we are sending our cassava down there cassava does not grow over there and there are other things that grows here so when you do something out of malice the consequential effect is what you should be waiting for and the one they stopped in jeba what happened to it it got destroyed okay now all right you want well, to just a quick reaction to that uh number one like uh barista omojo has said I believe we are doing a lot down south uh, in terms of uh, a, a full security. When you even look at this tomato, you'll be amazed with the number of our people producing tomato today in the state. It's as if we anticipated this. Yes. A lot of our young ones are into tomato. I know people yes. taking tomato yes. from here to Lagos yes. for sale. Okay. I even wrote. Okay. I even wrote. Now I wrote about going to about over a month i wrote to the governor i said if this trend continue in our tomato production we, we, we should be thinking about processing and also assessing lagos market we now wrote to the governor of lagos state that we, we need a place in lagos where we can do organized market marketing so that we connect all these young ones in tomato they take their tomato right uh, to lagos we agree on the day that we move and things like that. So we, I, I, I believe we we are going the, in in the right direction in terms of food production. As I'm talking to you now, the governor is walking around the clock on irrigation. He's walking around the because like uh, it, 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 it's only in this part of the country that in part of the world that people see talking about planting season. Mm -hmm. You plant around the year. Uh, all you need to do is to look at what you need for that particular period and you put it and we have started something even if you watch what is going, going on online in lagos what i posted people said yes they are even going to practicalize it i said get bags get 10 bags and plant 10 stands of tomato get another 10 bags fill it with topsoil put it in the back of your house if you want to see what i'm talking about come to psych office put, yeah. and see what we are doing there you can plant yam at the, even when your your your, your compound is a, 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 a flawed. flawed so you can put what put plant or crop raise uh, raise uh, rabbit raise chicken noila in your house because food security is at three levels the global food security that is important but not not the most important national food security that is more important than the uh, uh, global food security then when you look at food security at the grassroots at the family level that is the most critical and if you you put all this that we are saying into practice you will have succeeded in doing one thing you will reduce your expenditure on food items it, it means you you have more money for other things. other things and not 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 just not just that 
I'm saying this now. Beef only takes about 1.2 billion naira from the southwest every day. You cannot blame some of uh, most of our civilian governors. What we are trying to do presently in the state, we are bringing back uh, 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 goat rearing. We are bringing back cattle production. Why? Uh, if you look, not only the military administrators, mo administrations, most of the states, the cattle that each of those states are having, we were consumed by many mil lands. Uh, military governors, when they want to have ceremony in their in their home state, they will say they bring five. When the mother in law is having this, they take all those things away. So when you look at that, you discover that uh, the, 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 the sector was truncated, the sector was bastardized largely during uh, that period. And now my appeal is to our people. My appeal is to the good people of all those states. My appeal is to the good people of. Uh, the country generally that you can do something at the back of your house you can produce your, your your tomatoes you can produce your vegetables you don't have to depend on other i made a simple calculation i discovered that in on those state an average average of 15 million naira is being expended on tomato every day if you keep that 15 if you produce a tomato here if and you keep the 15 million naira in circulation here, mm. life will be better. That is the bedrock of poverty in our state. Okay, how much, of so, how much of support is government giving people who are willing to come into We, we have been doing that. We, have, we, we bought inputs, we, uh, uh, fertilizer, we bought uh, uh, seeds, and people are coming to our are place. Things to get, uh, yes, at subsidized, at subsidized rate. In the next one or two weeks, Mr. Governor will flag off a program in the state. He's giving out drip irrigation. Uh, equipment to our people for so free. that for, no it's not going to be for free okay. it's business okay. but then we pay uh, it will be at a subsidized rate then we spread the payment right. over a period of time just as we did on tractors in installments so, in, in, in installments okay. so that and we are working on the market we are going to create green shops in Akure. we are going to create green shops in in undo we are going to create green shops in Owo. we are going to create green shops in itare Omo, our urban centers so that you can even buy your food items without going to any market. Okay. And it's going to be run by our people, our young ones. They will stay in their grain shop. Supply will be brought there. You call them on phone that I need also kilograms of tomato. I need also so kilograms of, uh, of 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 chicken. And they drop, they deliver in your in, in, uh, to you in your office or in your house. So okay. that we we, we, we we instead of this old method of market that you have to leave one place, go and pack your. We will use ICT to drive our market. All right. Okay, we would be opening the ports now for people to call. This issue affected almost everybody. And so we'd like to hear from you. What lesson did you learn from this recent blockage of food, of food um, uh, products from the north? And what do you think should be the way forward? Before we, we start taking calls, Mr. Uh, Omoshua, now you, you heard everything that he has said. We might uh, want to believe that he's saying all of this is because he's in government. Do you think government is doing enough, well enough, to ensure that, and especially the youth, which form the most active part of the of the society? Do you think government is doing enough to entice them into, into farming? I wouldn't even say this simply because maybe I'm a member of the party. But I am saying this simply because I've lived after, uh, outside this state for almost 15 to 20 years in Abuja. But the little time I come to the grassroots, I don't need to, to eat mangoes that they use a uh, uh, what's it called? Preserved. They they, are, they use previous, uh, preservation to, to 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 make. I go straight and I get it. And uh, I want to believe in what uh, Engineer Lotu just said. It is about us. And thank God this thing is not just coming. It's not as if this government did not prepare for it. Had it been. It is on those state alone that this thing is affecting. I believe on those state can survive it. I have a friend that is doing something in Ogbese, Usho area, where I come from. She called me. This is somebody that has lived in London for many years. And she told me that she needed a house in Usho, that I should help her. What's she doing? This woman is into tomato, uh, uh, what's it called? Production. Production. I am talking about somebody who has lived outside Nigeria for many years. And what, what's happening? She told me that what she's making in that village is more than what she was making in London. So what are we talking about? We have the land. Our lands here, they have different soils, soil type. 
that can grow yam, that can grow beans, as that can as grow much, vegetables. As much, as much as we want to talk about yes. all the efforts of government and the place of even the citizens in ensuring that uh, we we have enough food to feed ourselves and probably to feed other people, let's talk about the security of lives and property, which is very, very paramount. Without security, farming would, would be made very difficult. That is even what I even believe I want to tell the, the government. The, the government Where, if we have security, I want to believe all these things will work. In fact, the template, the synopsis you have read here, can fly, not can even work. The, government of the, state, the government of the state made uh, a very uh, bold um, announcement some time back, and a lot of people really uh, applauded him for that when he announced that all unregistered headsmen in the forest should leave. Uh, I mean, he said that before, and a lot of people uh, think, thought that the gov governor did the right thing. But how possible is it for us to have a sustained policy in that regard? Do you, sometimes, they call it um, policy assassination. You say something today, tomorrow you're doing something else. Execution of policies, so to say. Do you think that, or is government doing enough to ensure that this policy is sustained? Well, I can say this with all authority at my disposal. Uh, that Arakoreolua wrote me, Audrey Arakoreolua, the governor of Ondo State today is a man of integrity. He's a man that honors his words. That is why people call him talk and do. I'm not here to praise him, but I'm telling you who he is. Okay. Now, he said it, and if you look at, you know, when the issue of Amoteko started, he was, that's why the fact that he was just, he was the, the only governor that he's was here having a second, he spearheaded it. While others were still looking at this, he started it. This thing started in Ondo State. And he made it abundantly clear. I, I believe Arakuri is a detravelized Nigerian. He will tell you that in his family that maybe that maybe he's the only Yoruba person in his family. So and what I'm trying to say is that the issue of security is jamming and he's doing everything possible. But when you look at this issue of security too, I still believe our people we need to do a lot in this regard. Okay. Security is best at community level. Whatever the government is doing, doing you have that come. Now, a, a group of people came to him sometimes ago, uh, and one of them is Cap, uh, the Cap he put on, the put Akogun. Mm -hmm. And you know Akogun mm -hmm. should be a warrior. But the way this Akogun was talking, hey, 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 what do you want people in the town to do? Akogu should lead. We are not saying go and fight people. We are saying you can organize yourself. You, 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 you don't take laws into your hands. But organize yourself. Be vigilant. Report whatever is going on around in, in, your, in your neighborhood. There yeah, was a particular location. I was moving towards that direction that day. And I, did, I saw people. I discovered that yeah, we saw cattle grazing uh, on uh, someone's uh, farm. I have to stop. And two of us, we apprehended the man. We apprehended the Hada and we brought him to the town, to the village. And I told them, watch over this man. I want to inspect something over there. By the time I'm coming back, we will look at this. By the time I came back, they said the man escaped. I said he escaped in the midst of about 80 people, all of you. The man that two of us brought here escaped in your midst. I said, then you are not serious. Okay, the number to call to, uh, this morning to be part of the program is 0816251991, Okay, um, advice from Moshua. Uh, a lot of people, you, 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 you heard when he said the other time that a gospel singer uh, once uh, said that uh, which a lot of people have this mentality that once you're a farmer, it's either you live a wretched life, you're not be able to pay your bills and all of that. Do, do you think there could be some sort of paradigm shift uh, where government sensitizes and make people realize that farming is no more the way it used to be in those days? Yes. I think you are right there, but uh, before we get there, there is something called passion. Before you can survive or succeed in everything you do, you must have the passion for it. I remember when I was in the university, despite the fact that my dad was into mechanized farming, I was still farming. Whenever my 
money is given to me, uh, pocket money, I still have farm. When I come from holiday, in fact, there was a year I shell almost 14 uh, bags of uh, uh, grains of corn. So I have passion. So the first thing we need to build first is passion. Passion is what drives you. I love this. Not as if rain will fall. You say you are a poultry farmer. Rain will fall in the morning. You say, oh, I can't go to my poultry. Now you know if you don't go and take care of your uh, birds, birds, they will have problems. Or maybe you have farm that you need to go to early in the morning. You say because of one thing or the other. When you have passion, even in the night, what you'll be thinking about is that farm. And that does not stop us from even doing some other uh, uh, jobs that we are doing. And one thing we must understand is that yeah. one thing that okay, has we not have someone on the line. Hello, okay. good morning. Hello, uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. What's your name? Yes, this is Inka Akibino. Inka Akibino, where are you calling from, Inka? I say Akibino, calling from Okitipopa. Mr. Akibino from Okitipopa. Okay, so yeah. tell us, what le lesson did you learn from the blockade of food supply to uh, the, the South? Yes, I, I think we start to tell we should wake up. We should wake up because that the full is or whatever they call themselves are bringing by their food does not mean that they don't have that evil agenda behind the food they are bringing it's very very i apologize for that uh, but would want you to be ethnocentric on the show you cannot um, incite violence wow. on this show please hello wow. good morning i'm calling from iwaroka good to have you what's your I name okay we have been doing in terms of uh, food production. We have been over dependent in the uh, you know uh, in the uh, food uh, items. We depend too much on food items that are brought from other places. I believe that we are able to produce food sufficiently in our land. But the problem we are facing uh, right now is. Uh, this uh, insecurity. If we are able to overcome insecurity and we are able to drive away the nuisance from our land, people who have been destroying our farms, if they cease to do so, I believe that we'll be able to produce enough food. We are very much, the, the challenges we are facing are only helping us to, to, to discover ourselves. And we are discovering ourselves in the bid to, uh, to see that we do something. Discovering ourselves, we now recover ourselves. I just believe that we are able to to do farming. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, comrade. Our hello, hello. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. What's your name? Your name again? Okay, please go ahead. I'm very happy concerning what is happening. But we do thing also in Yoruba that we share the mission lewa. We have done this thing before. But it will be, it will because those people are bringing food, that's why we copy. I'm very happy. Let them say their something. Let them say their food. Let them let us be here. If we started our own, our own is, we are, we are not using fertilizer to, to any food that we are in here. When we are doing it, they are, they are purposeless. Let us start it. And the goal we have our government, go we have us. Thank you, man. All right, thank you very much for being a part of the program. Uh, we've had about three different uh, opinions from people uh, on, on the aggregates. How would you react to these um, submissions? Well, I want to appeal to, I believe in one Nigeria, I believe we can coexist together, the north, the east, all of us. But we must all be law abiding. Mm. My appeal to our northern brothers in uh, in the southwest today is that they should cooperate with the government to fish out the bad elements that are destroying the good ones in, uh, in, 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 in our midst. Definitely, I know uh we i don't want to do ethnic uh, profiling as people are saying mm. but we have discovered one thing over the years that people that were kidnapped when they come 
when they are debriefed, the, com the constant has been that this the kidnappers are from the si from the same place. So my appeal is that if you have a bad egg in your midst and you quickly point out that one, then it, it will be better for all of us. So we need that uh, because as of today, security of lives, security of farms cannot be compromised by any any responsible government mm. because that is, is, is fundamental, it's critical. I know a rice farmer that uh, the wife was raped in uh, uh, Obese and the woman died eventually, you know. So this cannot continue. We need one another, but we must ensure that you don't use your business to destroy my own business. That is sacrosanct. Okay, let's take more calls. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good day. What's your name? This is Ekunda. I'm calling from Mifon. Ekunda, you from Mifon. Okay, let's have you. Um, I want to advise where the Southerners that if possible, if practicable, let's forbid eating of cows. Let's go for fish. For fish. Chicken. Okay. Okay. And the government should look into it, if possible, construct a standard core room. And they should import all these things. After some times, we will develop on our own. As we do this, all those uh, are All right, thank you very much. Uh, he wants Southerners, according to the last caller, Barisa Moshua, he wants Southerners to, to stop the intake of uh, red meat, that's uh, beef. Do you think this is feasible? Uh, that is just... To opt for uh, many people are saying it, but uh, there are some people that love eating. And it's about the cheapest? Uh, not even about the cheapest. At times, at our age now, we are told not to eat red meat. So, I had, or it's advice. She said Mrs. Ekundayo, not Mr. Ekundayo. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, advice is good, uh, medically or what have you. But when you look at it, even in on those stage alone, we have three weathers. You have the aquatic, you have the agrarian, you have uh, the savanna right, in the savanna. north. So that means here alone, there is nothing, even growing of fish, except when we are talking about species of other fishes. But if it's about catfish, it can be grown anywhere in those stage. So let's say it is given to the south, produce fish, central, produce uh, yam and some uh, what have you even if they not produce rice that means we can take care of us of ourselves so it is possible the one thing i know about us is that yesterday was the best time to do what was good today is another better day okay one Tomorrow of the demands listed by the uh said traders is that government should compensate every of their member that um, lost its property in the shasha incident do you think that it's advisable for government to do that well it means the same government must compensate farmers that their okay. farms were destroyed mm. this is happening on a daily basis we put some youth together at the dam there at ibaraki the, you need to see the cowpea they planted fantastic we organize, we organize a training program with redeemed christian church of god they put their youth together we had three days or two days of training uh, uh, program with them on tomato and some of these arable crops and they moved to that site government cleared the site we made it available to them they planted this thing some some people took that to there and destroyed it overnight mm. within four days they clear everything so what we are saying is this that if government is compensating uh, uh, people that lost their stock in Shasha, they should only think about those farmers that are daily that are, are having their farms destroyed on okay. daily basis. Okay. But if on, 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 as a rider to that, my appeal will go to the northern governors. Okay. Yes, my appeal will go to the northern governors. They are they, they hold the key in this in in in, in this situation. The north 
When you look at land area, they have more land area than the southern part of the country. Okay. If they have land to grow tomato, if they have land to grow maize, if they have land to produce rice, I do, and they have water. It's like the Federal Minister of Water Resources is solely meant for the upper part of the country. I don't see why they cannot have pastures that they can use to, to take care cattle. of this animal around the year. Mm -hmm. And like what your Bafima Ola was said, let them, you know, okay, now let me go into that. I wanted to refer to what the governor of Baoshi said, but maybe we might, has been might be real, so we should, we should old do. ones. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's not a new thing. It's something that has been there. So they can do this. Then prepare the beef in a frozen uh, manner. Preserve. And pre preserve it. Send it to uh, uh, the southern part of the country. So that let's, 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 let's work in a modern way in this 21st century. So they hold the key when it comes to this issue of security. And the movement of uh, people from outside the country, having this free movement into Nigeria is not ideal. As somebody will just come in. I saw one, I believe, I saw one in Alabaka in the course of my discussion with him. He told me he came from Burkina Faso. Hmm. In Akure, somebody from Burkina Faso, if, if, if he should commit any crime today, how are you going to trace? How are you going to trace? Okay, him? so we do not have a lopsided lop um, discussion, just as we've been clamoring for the protection of the lives and property of southerners. Should we, we also uh, speak to the conscience of the people to not take out their anger and frustration on people, on northerners who are legitimately doing uh, their business around here? I, I agree with you, and I've said that earlier on. We need one another. We need one another. We don't need to fight. Our size, uh, 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 our size in terms of land, our size in terms of population, there are advantages to us. Tremendous, they have tremendous advantages to us. So we must, but we cannot have a master servant uh, relationship. Mm. Then in every community, the norm is this respect your host. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, respect your host. You must, if I leave here today and go to Denmark, and I'm getting to Denmark, I begin to behave as if. There yeah, were no people. Terrorize them. I, had, I begin to terrorize. They will, if, ne, next thing they will Eviction do is, is to look at how to evict me. Sure. Okay, so we have other people on the line. Hello, good morning. Uh -huh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. What's your name? Yes. I'm Samuel. Samuel. Yes. All right. Um, I love this discussion this morning. Thank you. And I want to thank you to get. How are you there? Security is fundamental for food security. What I would advise is that our governor should be serious with his process. Flushing out people from the forest. We are preventing people from family. We are in that process. What does happen? Uh, Samuel, I'm sorry, but uh, we will barely hear what you were saying. The, the network wasn't really friendly. Hello, good morning. You could call back. Hello, good morning. Yeah, I'm speaking with Mr. Francis from Mori. Mr. Francis, good to have you. Thank you. Uh, I want to, I want people to know that the same people who destroy our farm here in the south, they are the same people now who is refusing to bring food to, to the south. We should not be panicked, it's just an intimidation. We can grow what we can use here in our land. It's because of our government who are not serious about farming. We have enough land. And if we don't bring food to us, we can survive. When federal government ban importation of rice, at least we survive. The only thing is that the beginning of the whole thing will not be easy. But if we have a good mind, we are going to survive. We should not depend on them. We should not be panicked. We should not be intimidated. Okay. All right. Thank you very. Thank you very much. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You're my last caller. Yeah, What's your name? You are the calling from Futa. Okay. Good to have you. Uh, actually, we all depend on ourselves. Definitely. I think what our government needs to do is to make everybody have a sense of belonging. We all need to know the reflection of our president. 
towards the Yukatu area. He's trying to let all Nigerians know that. Okay, um, sorry, we lost that call. Probably you'd have to uh, call us again on a very, very uh, concluding note now. Barrister Moshua, a lot of people have been opining. You know, people will talk definitely when situations like this arise. They, they've been opining that the South should also rebuff food items from the North at this point. Do you think that would not do more harm than good? Yeah, I think uh, if we say rebuff, I see life as a as symbiotic in nature. You, five children cannot be born in a family and one person will say he can do it in a loan. As much as we still call ourselves a legal entity called Nigeria, we cannot do without ourselves. But one thing that we must be very careful about is, I discussed about spite the other time. What happened recently was born out of malice and spite. And that goes to show that our security in our individual states in the South must be very sound. It's thank, God, thank God for the type of governor we have, have in those state that is not talking from different side of the mouth. May the Lord bless him. May the Lord keep him. And may other governors from the South learn from him. from him. Because whatever we do today will stand as challenge from tomorrow for tomorrow. Now what I'm saying in essence is that we must equally think about the quality of food that is even being brought down. We have seen in some clips where we had that some tomatoes are being injected. Now I don't know how far that is true. But I am not in government. I have the freedom to talk. I know it's only Mr. Lotu that will want to balance you have the this. the freedom and to talk, to <laughs> say what you like, but, but not on air. No, no, I am only saying this for the benefit of every one of us. Because whatever product that leaves, that leaves uh, China, it must be of quality. They must censor it. They must look at it if it is according to specification. So I think if we are now taking whatever we see, Ukulai and Sinka, we have to be careful. And with this type of thing that happened recently, it goes to show that we have to be careful, we have to develop our local agriculture, okay. and we have to uh, do more about ourselves okay, we talk, and rely more about ourselves. Yeah, thank you. When we talk about security, it's all-encompassing. Yeah. What I eat should be um, edible enough, and that also is part of securing my life. You, you are an official in charge of agriculture in those state. Is there any way these food items can be monitored and uh, to ensure that we're not even, like he said, that we're not eating what would eventually cause some sort of health hazards? Well, uh, you cannot do laboratory analysis uh, on your own. Uh, I do advise my family whenever we are buying cowpeas or beans, I always tell my wife, look for one that has a weevil. <laughs> At least they are okay. the presence of we will see it moving. Mm. Uh, if you don't see that, if it's too clean, maybe if you buy, we have to keep for a while, mm. at least for maybe 14, 21 days, mm. so that uh, we can. That's uh, an expert's advice. Yeah, okay. what, what is there? But I want to appeal to the, the good people of this state. I want to start with the rich ones. I am begging. Instead of building filling stations, instead of building event centers, Please, in hotels, in uh, secondary primary schools, please invest in agribusiness. Come to OSAIC, we will tell you what to do. I've been telling people, if you keep 500 goods, you are richer each other than someone that is having a filling station. Hmm. Just 500? 500. 500 goods. You are richer than the one having a filling station. What is government doing about pig farming? Is there anything um, pig, pig farming? Pig farming, but in the, within the next, uh, I'm sure within the next 50 days, Governor will commission the biggest and most modern pig village in the southwest or even in the country. Okay, and that will be cited in Ondo In Ondo State. We, we, we are almost true with it. Wow. Uh, and apart from that, please, our women at home, I'm appealing to you. We know women in those days train their children with proceeds from goats. Hmm. So please, our, uh, we want to have Yailewure back in our uh, rural, uh, in our communities apart from that i i will be having a training on feedlot okay uh, uh in the next within two weeks please so please if you're interested get across to us right. we are only working on on those state farmers bank we want shareholders 
We want to unlock okay, the financial sector. Okay, you have to come. Uh, so please. Not on this show, you cannot be reading all those things. You have to pay. You have yeah, to we, pay. We will do that. We are, we are saying this now because these are the things we have to do. Okay, the thank you very much. Is a must for <laughs> thank us you for coming months. on the program. Um, Mr. Kyolotu, and let's say to Mr. Governor on agriculture in Indo State, it's nice to have you around. Uh, I just love what you are. Thank you very much. We really yeah. appreciate you. Thanks. Well, it's it's been said, all has been said, and we do hope that it will be done. My name remains Olabi Solani Yolo Ashegu. Next week, Thursday, we'll be back with another interesting topic. Before then, God bless Nigeria. <laughs> Adaba 8819 FM, your life changing experience.